Hi, this is Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com and welcome back to my series on the Prophet 5 Restoration and Repair. Uh, this is part 4 of the video series and uh, part 1 we uh, opened up the Prophet 5 and had a look inside. Uh, and this Prophet 5 wasn't working. Uh, all the lights were on. 88 was showing for the um, for the program and bank number and uh, it wasn't responsive to any controls. In the second part, we rebuilt the power supply. In the third part, we uh, changed a broken pot, changed the battery, and recapped the entire synthesizer. And uh, I left you with a bit of a cliffhanger. Uh, I didn't turn it on to let you know uh, if, if what we did fixed it. So now it's time for the moment of truth. Let's fire up the Prophet 5 and see if what we did just by chance fixed it and I turn it on and all the lights are on and 88 is there just as before. So uh, we didn't get lucky and accidentally fix whatever this problem was, um, but all those things that we did in the previous videos, it wasn't a waste of time. That's stuff that I would have done anyway when restoring one of these. Um, I mean, we came across a tantalum capacitor that was, was totally fried. So it, it's always a good idea to get all of those out of your vintage synthesizers um, before they, they fry and take things with them. Uh, so in this video, we're going to be uh, tracking this down, this problem down methodically. Um, and uh, we'll see what the deal is and hopefully we'll get this working in this video. So this is a revision uh, 3.2 Profit 5. And uh, I can tell that because when we had it open, it says so on the uh, the circuit board and uh, if it was a revision 3.3 there would be things cut and jumpered and uh, later ROM revision and, and stuff like that. The revision 3.2 has a self-diagnostic test so that may help us narrow down where our problem is. Uh, unfortunately you can't activate it with by pressing buttons on the panel uh, you have to jump something inside so I'll open this back up and show you what we need to do. So right now we're looking at board 3, the CPU board, and in order to uh, access this uh, test, we have to install a jumper uh, between this test point 304 here, which is labeled as uh, memory test, and the 5 volt rail. And conveniently there's a, a little part here where we can clip that to um, that they made the 5 volt rail easily accessible and uh, then we can go and turn the keyboard back on. So according to my handy service manual that I have here, with this uh, version of ROM that I have, uh, with that jumper in place, when I turn it on, it'll, it'll go to the memory test, and it should flash the LEDs on the panel, and then when I hit the tune button, it should go through and it should test the RAM, the different RAM, the, the scratch pad RAM and the non-volatile RAM, and the ROM and the timer and uh, let me know if there's a problem in any of those areas. So I am going to turn it on and we'll see what happens. So I turn it on and the LEDs are not flashing and uh, it, it, it couldn't even execute this test. So uh, to me uh, the first thing that I would want to check would be the CPU. So I'm going to get the oscilloscope and we're going to have a look at the CPU. So I busted out the oscilloscope and um, what, what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at the CPU. The, the CPU chip is right here and uh, if, if we're not even getting to the, to the memory test, the self test, then there's a few possibilities. Um, most likely of which is either the CPU is dead or it's not being started up properly. So we're, we're going to look first at the inputs to the CPU. There's a couple things that need to happen to make this CPU wake up and, uh, and fetch uh, instruction zero from the ROM and start executing. Uh, so this is a Z80 processor and the two things that we need to do or need to make sure are happening for this processor to uh, to come to life and start running is we need to verify that the reset line is going high so when the keyboard turns on there's a pin on here uh, called reset and that should go from low to high and then we also need to make sure that it's being fed uh, the correct clock um, 
So this the CPU has an external clock, and the uh, oscillator is right here. Uh, it's a five megahertz uh, clock, but I think the CPU is actually running at half of that at, at two and a half megahertz. Um, so uh, the first thing I'm going to look at is the reset line. Uh, the reset, according to my schematics, is pin 26. So I will pop over here. 22, 24, 26. So with the synthesizer off, reset is at zero. Um, I mean, there is power in this synthesizer still from the battery. So it's good that it's uh, zero volts. And I'll turn the keyboard on. And reset goes high. Turn the keyboard off, reset goes low. So uh, the reset line is being sent correctly to the CPU. The other input that it needs to run correctly is the clock, and the clock comes in on pin 6, so I'll come down here, 2, 4, 6, so the keyboard's off, I'll turn the keyboard on, and uh, I saw it budge up a little bit, but uh, it's not a uh, 5 volt square wave like it should be. So uh, we're, not, we're not getting a clock into the CPU, so without a clock it can't execute any um, instructions. So we're in the right direction. So now let's work our way back. Um, so there's the clock here uh, is going through this uh, TTL chip. Uh, the output of the TTL chip is coming to the CPU pin 6, which we just measured. So let's check the input from the clock to the TTL chip uh, that basically divides it from 5 megahertz down to 2.5 megahertz. The input is on pin 3 of this chip. So pin 3 is right here. And I see something. What is this? There's some kind of signal there, but it is uh, definitely not a 5 volt square wave. So, so we're looking directly on the output of this, on the input of this. And there's a couple possibilities. One is that the clock is, is, is messed up, and uh, that junk that we were seeing going into the TTL chip is, is truly the output of the clock. The other possibility is the TTL chip is bad and it's uh, basically pulling down or up the output of the clock. So from this we can't reliably say this is bad or this is bad, but we know one of them is bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take the, um, I mean I, I guess I could cut the leads to the TTL chip and sacrifice it, but I'm just going to pull the clock out and desolder the clock and we can test it out of circuit. And uh, if it's good, then we know to change this chip. If it's bad, then um, then we we'll, we we'll need to replace it. So I'm going to have to uh, turn things off and and pull this board out and uh, and desolder this part. So here we are again with the processor board, and uh, we're going to take out uh, this component here, which is the, the five megahertz clock, and there's uh, four pins on the back. <laughs> it comes. So here's my little test setup for the uh, oscillator. Um, so oscillator has four pins. One is the power, so I'm going to be connecting it to this 5 volt uh, benchtop supply. One pin is the ground. One pin isn't used for anything. And then one pin is the output. So uh, when I fire up the power supply, I should see uh, um, a 0 to 5 volt uh, wave there and I'm seeing pretty much the same thing that I was seeing when it was in circuit. Uh, it looks like uh, the signal is between one and a half volts to uh, three volts. Um, and there it just, just changed again. 
So, uh, so this, this oscillator is bad and needs to be replaced. I'm going to see if I have one um, with the same, uh, same frequency as this. So I don't have a uh, 5 megahertz uh, oscillator. Uh, and, and this isn't just like a regular crystal, like a quartz crystal. This is a, qu uh, a crystal oscillator, which is, which is different. Um, I had one of another, another value um, here that, uh, that I, I can show you. I just hooked it up to this. To show you for comparison, this is, this is what a working uh, oscillator looks like on the oscilloscope. So ours was um, wasn't making it down to zero volts, and and um, it, it didn't didn't look like this. So uh, so this is probably uh, I mean this is at least one problem uh, that's preventing our profit from working. So now I have a few possibilities for what I'm going to do about this. Uh, one of them would be to uh, make my own oscillator. So either find a crystal or a crystal oscillator, and. Uh, do some kind of tricks to it, like uh, frequency division or, or something else like that, to get it to be 5 megahertz. Um, I could scavenge uh, this part from my other Profit 5, although I don't want to do that because my Profit 5, other Profit 5, is also not a parts machine. Um, or I can try to source a, uh, a, new, a new oscillator. And I'm going to try to get a new oscillator. Um, I'll see if there's a drop-in replacement available because I would prefer to do that um, before trying more drastic measures. So a whole week later and uh, I did source a replacement clock and uh, now it's time to put this in. So uh, there, there's a polarity to this uh, I and mean, the pins are, are numbered so you need to make sure that the uh, pins on the new clock match the position of the, uh, the pins on the circuit board and uh, I'll place that and solder it into place. Now we're ready to give this a shot. So I've got the new clock in and now we're ready to fire it up and see if it works. And uh, I saw it flash 88 and then turn off as the CPU comes to life and it's going through its auto-tune routine now and it it seems to come up. Um, you know, there's there's no presets loaded, so this is just going to be garbage from whatever is randomly in memory. We'll take it off of preset, and then we could uh, dial up patches, but it's whatever the knobs are now randomly. So there is noise coming out of the keyboard now. It sounds like keys are either not triggering or re-triggering. So before I go through and I, and I uh, comprehensively test this keyboard, uh, we need to do the next part of the restoration, which is the key bed. So I need to know that when I'm pressing a key, it's, it's triggering correctly. And if I'm hearing something re-trigger or not trigger, it's not due to a mechanical issue or, or dirty key contacts. So in the next video, we're going to pull a key bed and we're going to uh, do a restoration of the key bed. Also, uh, if you can hear, the, the keys are, are kind of clacking. Uh, they'll sound a lot better with new bushings. So we're going to replace the key bushings, clean and adjust the key contacts so we know that, that the key bed is working correctly when we test the keyboard. But before I do that, I'm going to do that, uh, that self-test procedure again. Um, we tried to do it <clears throat> earlier in the video and, uh, and we couldn't do it because the CPU was, was not even starting up. But uh, I'm going to power the keyboard off and I'm going to connect the jumper again. And uh, we're going to see if it passes its self-test. So once again, I'm going to connect the jumper here from the 5 volts to the M test, memory test. Uh, jumper terminal here on board three and then I'll put it back down and and we'll fire it up. In order to get accurate results for the uh, memory test we need to be able to write to the memory so we need to switch the record switch uh, to enable if it's not already enable. <clears throat> now with that jumper in place we'll turn on the keyboard and it's going to go through uh, cycling all the different LEDs and uh, maybe I'll do a fast motion of the LEDs cycling 
just so you get the general idea. And uh, when you get tired of watching the LEDs cycle around, you hit the tune button and then it begins the uh, memory test. So uh, it tells you which test it's running. So right now it's running test one, which is the uh, scratch pad RAM. Now it's running test two, which is the non-volatile RAM. Uh, it went through three pretty quickly, which is the ROM, and uh, four, which was the, the timer. And now it's displaying zero, which means that it's, the, uh, it's reached the end of the test and there were no errors. If there were an error, um, it would stop and flash the area that, that you're having a problem with. So uh, just, for, just for fun, I'm going to come back around here and mark uh, the record disable. So now it won't be able to record to, uh, to non-volatile RAM and we'll, we'll see what happens with the, the memory test. So scratch pad RAM and non-volatile RAM it threw up an error and stopped the test. But you need to make sure that, that the uh, enable switch is, is on uh, to get accurate results with this test. So the self-test, the memory test passes. Um, so things are looking pretty good right now. So, in this video, we got this Prophet 5 to actually boot up, and uh, I, I changed some of the settings, and it actually does, I mean, it, it has definite key, key bed issues, but it, it does produce um, notes. So, uh, in the next video, we're going to pull the key bed out, and I'll show you how we change the bushings and clean the key contacts. And uh, after that, I'll be able to, to test everything out. If there's any other issues, we'll repair them. And uh, then I'll show you the calibration procedure to get the Prophet 5 uh, all uh, in tune and, and ready to go. So this is Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, please post in the comments. And uh, don't forget to subscribe so when the next uh, part of the video comes out, um, you'll be the first to know. Thanks again and have a great day. Bye.